is from what my computer says I have audio. I can see that there's audio there. So, okay, Vanessa says yes. Okay, great. So I'm really sad you missed the whole beginning of that. So I'm going to say it again because clearly I was uh, without sound. Um, I, I've been thinking a lot about going um, live using an external camera because um, I like the quality of it a little bit better. And um, yeah, I just like the quality of like a real camera better. And I didn't want to fork out money to buy a, a, a dedicated camcorder because A, money, and B, I have a great camera set up already and that I was hoping I'd be able to use to go live for longer periods of time. As many of you know, with DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, maximum record time is 24 minutes. So I was kind of looking for something to work with that, right? Okay, so um, my friend Aaron Fry over at Rockport Camera, um, we've been talking about this a lot. We've been looking at the AV.io. We were looking at the um, the Blackmagic design, and here we go. So this is the Blackmagic um, Ultra Studio Mini Recorder that I got, and this thing is this thing's solid. And um, it you know came with a it came with look at this. It's pretty fancy. It comes with this little uh, a little thing. You open it up. It's got an SD card in it. And, um, yeah, installed the driver, doesn't work, um, read all through the forums, tried all sorts of different things, but ultimately in the last six months with the High Sierra update on, um, on Apple, it's not working. And that really is a problem, you know. So I called my little friend Aaron Fry at Rockford Camera and said, help. <laughs> And he did. He helped me. He's like, I uh, got this AV.io thing, and I would really show it to you, but I'm afraid. Well, I'm afraid to move it. Let's see if I can get it in camera. I don't know if I can or not. There we go. There it is. You can see it over in the corner. So it is, um, it's plugged in. Seriously, all I did was um, I plugged it in. <laughs> And it worked. Like, I didn't have to install anything. I didn't have to even restart the program that I was working on, which was super awesome. And because I was in such a hurry to set this up, um, I, I, you're seeing me look off to the side because um, that's where my computer is. So I'm going to have to kind of figure this configuration out. I've got my camera on a tripod right now. I am using the audio from my computer. So I'm going to have to play with that and get that kind of all fixed and stuff. But... Um, and I think when I was at Rockport Camera, I remember Joe switched my um, my camera settings out of movie, so it's not out of focusing. So that's why you see me reaching and out of and focusing myself. But so huge props, Rockport Camera. They let me take this with me, give it a whirl on the live, and I'm so incredibly happy. So I'm going to go back to Rockport Camera when I'm done here, and I'm going to buy this puppy. It is price point's about five hundred dollars, right, Aaron? Um, if he's still here watching, but um, so price point's about 500 bucks, and but I think it's totally worth it to not have the headache of being up till 12:30 this morning trying to make it work. So, um, yeah, and like Aaron said, love that stream, love that thing. The stream looks great. So I'm totally see. I can look at that. So yeah, so Aaron Fry, 108th and Center Rockport Camera here in Omaha. Go talk to that guy if you're interested in kind of upping your. The beauty of your quality um, of your your camera recording for live video or any other video for that matter so um, okay so let's get started with today we've been kind of talking a little bit about um, rethinking website content in 2018 and um, I I have kind of a theory that I've been thinking about because traditionally what we've been telling everybody is that you need to tell your story, which I totally still agree with, but I think it's how we're telling that story that really, um, that really makes things different. And I'm going to stop for a second because I see Aaron did correct me on the price. It's a $400, which even better. I'm so excited. So, but yeah, so I've been, I've been thinking about this theory of how we rethink website content or content at all online in general. And what we need to do is I think we, yeah, we still need to tell our story, but what we're forgetting 
with our clients and customers is that they all have their own stories. And granted, it would be really difficult for us to kind of try and figure out what every single client's, you know, specific story is. And, you know, in some businesses, it's easier than others. Like I can talk with, you know, like Rockford Camera. I mean, I've, I've worked with them in the past and I know what, you know, they're, they're, they have all sorts of different customers that, you know, they're anywhere from the amateur to kids to adults, like uh, professionals um, and everything in between. So how do we as businesses attract those attract everyone, but make what we offer fit into their story, okay? And so today, what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk a little bit about um, how we rethink um, website content in terms of the marketing aspect of it. So what, what I think is we need to kind of roll up our sleeves and we need to get rid of the thought of sleazy marketing. And I tell you, we, I see it all the time, and I don't know if you guys do too, when you're seeing ads and stuff on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, you know, a lot of them are promising this, like, you know, grow a thousand subscribers in 30 days easily. And I hate to break it to you guys, there's nothing easy about growing a thousand subscribers in 30 days. There's nothing easy about it. And um, even if you try everything that that person says that you should do, chances are you're not going to see that kind of growth because it's really, really difficult and the circumstances have to be right, like your type of business, the amount of time you spend on growing it and things like that. And that's the sleazy marketing that I'm talking about. When you're growing a customer base for your business, it takes time. No joke, it takes time. And you know what? We are in this world of, of fast, marketing fast, you know, we want our products fast, like me, I want to buy product fast and I got it today. Thank you, Rocket Camera. But we want that and we want people who get us and we want to make sure that we have a relationship with these people. And when I go into a place like Rockford Camera, I have a relationship with people. Now, mine is a little bit different because I used to work there, but you know, I still, even though I don't work there anymore, I still feel a relationship and I know that they care about their customers, and I think that's really important. So, you know, with um, with this whole like end of sleazy marketing, we have to be realistic, and I think that's one of the main keys with marketing is we have to be realistic, we have to be truthful, and because if we don't do those things, we can't we can't engage in that um, was it like you know know me like me buy me, you know, we can't engage in that kind of a mentality. And so that's one, one aspect of it. We need to be real. We need to be truthful. We need to be raw. And when we're raw with people, I think that's what really helps others to grow relationships with us. Because you know what? We're not all perfect. You know, I think of um, Vanessa with Playing With Fire. And they just did, Vanessa and Chris and a bunch of people at Blue's Ed, they just did this, um, they just kind of did a video launch of what their summer programming is going to look like. And was it perfect? No. And that's okay because it was really engaging. I watched that whole video. They had all sorts of stuff going on and, um, but it was raw and it was real. And that's kind of, that's just what you get in the music scene, right? Like you get raw and you get real and they make mistakes. They're not all perfect, but man, it's the experience, right? So you're selling that experience. And, um, another thing to think about too, I'm kind of looking at my notes over on the side here because I cheat a little bit. And again, ask questions as we go through this. I'm totally happy to, to answer questions. Um, is And I am hugely um, guilty of this, is stop being so long, long-winded long with your content. <laughs> everyone who knows me, I talk a lot. I, I The teacher in me likes to be able to explain everything so that every one of you with different learning styles like, understands what I'm talking about. But when we're looking at online content, we don't have to be so long-winded. It's not like this where I'm kind of live and off the cuff and totally raw and I'm going to extrapolate and I'm going to talk about stuff. But on a website, people, we're in that skimming world, right? Everybody is skimming. Um, and I'm, I, I saw in a group, uh, one of the groups that I'm on on Facebook the other day, and someone was asking for um, real feedback on her about page. And so I took a look at it and I was like, oh my gosh, I felt like I was grading a high school English paper all over again. And that's something that we have to remember is that 
and I hate to say this because I taught English and I taught journalism, um, today's kind of business writing is nothing like what you learned in high school. Everything you learned in high school, especially from a, you need to have an introductory, you know, with a attention grabbing headline and you need to state your thesis at the end of the first paragraph. It doesn't work like that in the real world. Like, no, I don't want to go and read a blog post or an about page that says, you know, um, in this, in this about page, I'm going to talk about the following, <laughs> right? No one wants to read it. Click bounce rate goes up. You're, you know, you're losing customers, but I think, uh, and I'm doing this in my group right now on a cup of content. We're talking about the about page and how do you get people right away? You have to build empathy with them. You have to have some sort of an empathy building background statement. And I think that's what a lot of us forget is, you know, when we're busy being long winded, we're not, we're not getting to the point. And that's what people want. Cause we are in that fast paced world. People want things now, you know, they may, they may be patient enough to wait two days on Amazon, but they also want to know how to use it and be able to use it right. And I was able to do all those things today with my products. So, but yeah, how can, you don't have to spend 3,500 words writing your about page just to get the point across of like, okay, we started, you know, I started this business because why, why did you do it? And people want your why and they buy your why, right? They buy your why, but they also buy the results of what you offer. Okay. It's not the fact that you're, you know, my membership has all of these great features. We talked about this before, you know, it does, my website has all these features and my membership has all these great features but they buy the results that they're going to learn how to do what I do for their own business as quickly and efficiently as possible. Okay. And they're going to learn how to do it right so that it makes them the most money. So that's what you have to think about. You still have to show them what the features are. What are they going to get out of this? What are they going to get when they get involved in your thing? But they got to buy your, um, they got to buy your results. What are the results that you're providing? So, um, that's one thing. So stop being, we don't have to be so long winded as long as we get to the point and it's creative enough where people want to stick with us and keep reading and get sucked in. And all of a sudden they're reading your blog posts and they're, you know, they're doing all sorts of watching your videos and all that stuff. So the next thing I want to talk about is how we need to stop being the hero. And I talked a little bit about this, I think last week, but, um, we're not the hero in our clients and customer stories. And if you think about it, I'm talking about Rockport Camera right now because you know what? They kind of were my hero a little bit, but I bought a result. Yeah, I made, I'm going to spend 400 bucks and buy this AV.io thing, which is super cool, but I'm also buying a result. I'm buying a result that I can use a good quality camera. I can go live. Um, I can do what I want to do and it's easy. And that's what, you know, they weren't, they just provided the option. They were still technically my hero, but they made me be a hero for myself. And I think that's, what's really important. Um, so, you know, how can we build empathy with our clients? How can we stop thinking that we're the hero and realize that our clients and customers are the heroes, but we're helping them to succeed. And that's hugely important. And with that talking about successes, um, and you know, succeeding, it's really important that we actually um, address the successes of our clients and customers instead of their fears, because we have, I mean, there's a lot of fear-based um, marketing going on out there right now. It's in politics, it's in religion, and it's everywhere that we look like, you know, and fear works in a lot of people. But I think the more that we have this younger generation growing, they don't buy that. They're, they're not into fear tactics because it doesn't work for them. And it really doesn't work overall because you can't live your life in constant fear. And if we're promoting that, oh my gosh, you're going to be, you're, you know, it's going to be terrible if you don't work with me. No, you're going to be successful if you don't, if you do work with me. Does that make sense? So that's something to think about is that we need to address their successes and not their fears. Granted, it's good to look at their fears. You have to know what their fears are, but how can they be successful based on that fear? Okay. And then the other thing too, that I've been talking about with my members, this is kind of the last thing is being the guide that your customers are seeking. And, um, you know, when I, 
when I go to when I went to Rockport Cameron today, I was looking to Aaron to guide me and help me with what my problem was, right? And so he did that, and um, and here I am. I'm doing what I wanted to do in the first place, which was use an external camera to go live, have a good quality video. I'm going to work on the audio thing, so we're going to have to talk about that later, Aaron. But um, and the fact that this drives me crazy that it's not in focus. <laughs> I'll work on that too next time. But so deep down inside, and this is kind of going back to, and I've talked about it before, is um, Joseph Campbell wrote this book called A Hero with a Thousand Faces. And way back um, several years ago, I taught high school mythology at one of the schools I taught at. And one of the things that's really cool about it is Joseph Campbell has this whole um, methodology of like what the hero's journey looks like. I mean, they get a call and they reject the call, but then they accept it, and then they meet a mentor or a guide. And that guide doesn't do stuff for them, right? The guide guides them or mentors them into what they need to do and points out the things that they're doing wrong, but shows them the path of where they can be successful. And it's a really deep, thick read, and I'm sure you probably don't want to spend your time reading something super deep like that, but the cool part about it is you can probably, you can take any Star Wars movie and you can totally go through it and identify who like the guide is and who the hero is and all that stuff. Cool thing about Star Wars is a side note. You know, if you think of Luke Skywalker has been the hero in like episodes four, five, and six, but now that we're getting into some of the new stuff, like The Last Jedi, um, without doing any spoilers because you need to see it if you haven't seen it, is the fact that, um, uh, Luke Skywalker actually leaves the role of hero and he himself becomes a guide. And I think that's really cool is like you can like now you can start that whole story process all over again. But you have to think about how that all works with your business. You know, so, you know, how are you guiding your clients and customers into success? Um, and into, you know, that, that feeling, the empathy building relationship that where you get them. And that's something we need to think about in our content. We get you. It's not necessarily just how cool this new technology is. It's like how easy it makes it for what we want to do. So you have to think about that. Like, yeah, the, the features and stuff are great. What are the results and the benefits? And that's what we need to focus on. So that is what I wanted to talk to you about today was those things. Let's do a real quick recap. I don't know how many people we got. We got a couple people watching. So we talked about this is the end of sleazy marketing, and that's something that I'm pushing is that we need to just stop it. We need to be real, and we need to be raw, and we need to be truthful. And in order to, you know, to get long-lasting relationships with clients and customers, we need to do all those things. We need to stop telling people that we're just their hero and that we're going we're gonna to solve all their problems. We need to act more as a guide so that they keep coming back to us. Does that make sense? You know, with the hero, the hero's out there doing their own thing, and then they save your, they save you, and then they're gone, right? But with a guide, it's someone that you can always go back to. It's kind of like a coach or a mentor or something. So stop being the hero yourself. Play the role of guide more. Don't be so long-winded like I am when I talk on camera. <laughs> but try and get to the point when you're creating your content for your online purposes. So get to the point. Address people's, um, your client, your dream client's successes instead of their fears. Obviously, you need to identify what those fears are, but you still have to address their successes. And what, how are they going to be successful using your product or service? And then, you know, be that guide that your customers are looking for. Because that's really what they want right now is they want someone to guide them. And a lot of times they just want to do the stuff themselves. You know, if someone wants to learn how to do their own social media, it's because they don't have a budget to hire someone like me to do it for them. They want to, and it's possible people can do their own social media, but it takes time. And I'm not going to lie about that, but I show people how to do it in as little as time as possible. So that is what I wanted to tell you guys today. Let me see here. Oh man, Vanessa's saying my brain is on fire. Let me create that as an overlay. Lots of ideas stirring. Got to get to the About Us course. And that's what we're doing right now in our seven-day challenge on a cup of content is how do you develop converting online content? And uh, we're going to be doing day three today of that seven-day course. 
But yeah, if you want to, you can totally take the free trial of a cup of content and you get 100% access to everything, including the course that we're doing right now this month. So if you want to do that, you can head over to a cup of content.com slash live trial. I, I could put that in the comments here. Let me see. I'm going to go off camera for a minute. A cup of content.com slash live trial. I'm going to post it. It's going to show up. I'm going to make an overlay out of that. So if you go to that, you can get access to our 14 day live trial. You don't have to put a credit card in or anything. And it's completely 100% free, but you get to get in on the cool trial. Um, you get to get in on the course and you can also get in on our private Facebook group just for members only. And that's where a lot of the magic happens. So if you do that, you can get in and you can give it a shot and see what you think. So I'm really glad that you guys stuck with me through the audio <laughs> problem at the beginning. And I appreciate that. But again, Many thanks to Rockwork Camera for saving my day, being my hero, but also being my guide, and it was great. So thanks again. I hope you guys have a great day, and remember, you can always get, um, if you go over to our Facebook page once you're done here, you can click on um, following, I believe it is, or you're liked, and you can get um, all updates. I usually don't post more than like once a day. Um, sometimes twice, depending on what happens, but I don't flood your newsfeed with a bunch of crap. I flood it with important things that are happening in the world of social media. So have a great day, and I will see you guys next week, 1130 Central Standard Time, coming from even a better setup than today because the audio is going to work and we're going to have a lot more time to play with things. So thank you. I will see you guys next week.